Hello, I'm Mary Pat. And I'm Whitney, and this is a conversation for when you need peace. What the heck does peace mean? (laughs) (laughs) I think, like, you talk about peace, and immediately people are like, ah, I'm sitting next to an ocean, Mm -hmm. and I can, you know, hear the waves. Yeah. Like a setting, a place, um, state of mind. Yeah. Like, ah, yes, I can be tranquil now Mm -hmm. or it's nobody's talking everything's quiet I'm swinging on the front porch Mm -hmm. or sometimes pieces there's no clutter in my house everything is like fine or like I just wash my car like (laughs) honestly think about it that is peace inducing right yeah or like a lack of war like we talk about like wartime and peacetime so it gets thrown around and like oh and there's no conflict there's peace. Yeah. You can totally hold your mic up a little bit further. We're trying to figure out how to like balance our sound and stuff. So this is very real, very, very loud. We have very different voices. Yeah, so. we do. So I'm closer and she's a little bit more here. Anyways, real time. Hooray. Um, so yeah, wartime, peace, all of these different examples, but actually what is peace? Yeah. We like to think of peace as being kind of like circumstantial, but actually according to Jesus, peace disrupts something that we otherwise would feel is very chaotic. Mm. So fear and grief are the two common denominators of in the Bible. Like when we need peace, when Jesus talks about peace, when there is like a need for there to be some sort of anchor that holds us like in moments of we don't know which, which way is up. Um, and that's, that's when actually peace is like most effective. Um, so yeah. So like Jesus talks about how we are peacemakers as children of God. And when Jesus says that on the the sermon on the Mount, Matthew five, he says, blessed are the peacemakers for you shall be children of God to those, like we talk about, oh yeah, we're children of God. And it's like very commonplace, but like those people had never heard that before. Like contrary to popular belief where you would think like, (laughs) oh, the children of God, that had actually never been said up until that point when Jesus stood on that mountain. They were his chosen nation. Right. They were like his people, but right. they were not his children. They had never thought about God as being actual father figure to them. Well, because children was children of Israel, mm-hmm. children of Abraham, yep. Isaac, and Jacob. The patriarchs, yeah. And then Jesus flips the script in that moment and goes, "It when you're a peacemaker, you are actually a child of God. And everyone would have been like, uh, Which is actually a reference to himself, right? Because he is the son of God. So it's kind of like a double. <laughs> Jesus a little, is doing a big deal in this moment. <laughs> two sides of the same coin. He's like, you are a child of God as a peacemaker. Also, I am the son of God. Welcome, to the, welcome to the family. And I am a peacemaker. And we all know that Jesus did not come into the world to, he didn't make peace he wasn't sitting peacefully by the stream with everybody around him all the time. Like he created quite a kerfuffle, <laughs> you know, so making peace sometimes mm. goes against like what we automatically assume peace to be, which is actually more like comfort. Peace and comfort are not synonymous. Wow. So when we're talking about like when we need peace, mm-hmm because our life feels chaotic because there's things that are going on that like we need things to calm down or we need that element of comfort. What is it that we are talking about in this? Yeah. So like, I think that the, the thing is we need Jesus. We Mm -hmm. need the person of peace, um, who is Jesus himself. And a lot of times we settle for something much less than that. You know, we settle for coping mechanisms that are actually trying to make us a little bit more comfortable in our moments of, great fear or great loss. Um, and so, you know, like I think of this scripture where Jesus is talking to his disciples about, um, my peace I leave with you. And it's not the peace of the world that I leave with you. It's my peace. Um, I'll not leave you as orphans. Like I'll come to you with my spirit, you know, like he's about to leave them. They're about to experience like a certain kind of loss and grief that like cannot be overstated. You know, and he's telling them ahead of time, 
for this moment of grief that you're going to experience, like I already have the answer for you. Oh, and right. And it's me. Like I am still like present with you in your moment of... Because that was him promising the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to them, saying, hey, there's something that's coming that's even better than me being here all the time. Yep. I'm going to actually be able to be with you anywhere, Yeah. no, no matter what you're going through. And, and him sending his spirit was him sending his continual, never-ending, you know, how many times can you say everlasting peace, like in different ways? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. then when we are going through a state of grief and loss and chaos, how does peace get implemented into that? Like mm. what is the practical process of like inserting peace when all of those different things are going yeah. on? Um, I mean, I think that like the first thing is like, we often try to, like I said, we try to cope our way out of grief or fear. We try to bypass it in some way. And Jesus doesn't really ever subscribe to that. He's actually saying like, Hey, like sit in the middle of this and like, I will come to you in the middle of it. Um, and grief is, comes in all shapes and sizes, you know, it's not just, death of of a person it's death of like all of the the th- beautiful abundant life things that like we were supposed to have inherently given to us before sin well even when something is really good in your life and the season comes to yep. an end there's an amount of grief <laughs> that comes with yes. that there's grief in everything i mean and there has to be because of the situation that we find ourselves in where like we live in a sin saturated world there has to be grief in order for there to be joy. Like they, they go hand in hand so often. And when we try to bypass that, we try to bypass the fear of loss, like the fear of losing things, the fear, like trying to hold on to what we have, trying to keep what, what we have access to right now. So we don't have to experience that loss. Like the trust factor can only really happen like when we're willing to let Jesus enter into that space with us in the depth of our grief and our sorrow and our fear and not try to get around it and, you know, cover it up with things that actually just make us comfortable. I know for me personally, the amounts of times that I have experienced the least amount of peace is when I was not willing to let go. Yeah. Uh, Control is the thief of peace. Totally. And it sucks. It's like, in order to get something, you have to let it go. Yeah. What? That's not it. That's the worst thing ever. Which I think is, that's another really interesting point in Jesus telling people, like, you are children of God. Like, you, God is your father. Like, God has the ability to give and take away. Like, he is in charge. He's got it under control. Like it's his methods, his, his processes. And like him saying that at the very beginning of his ministry, when he's about to walk through a lot of grief and a lot of loss and a lot of endurance of discomfort, you know, like in order to do things as God's son, like in his, he's, he's creating actually some rupture and discontent in the situations that he's in because he's not going along with what everybody else has subscribed to the whole time. And I also feel like I need to say this. Being in a state of not having peace is not necessarily always your fault. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are situations that happen to you that are out of your control, that happen to you, that cause a lack of peace. Yep. But the only way to get through those things is to actually go into the middle of them and ask your questions. Mm. Feel what's going on. Yeah. Ignoring even something that has happened to you that's not fair. And believe me, there are certain times when people and situations, they should not have happened. It's not okay. Yeah. You know, things that are happening to you, things that have happened around you people being taken from you, situations, job loss, like family members. There's so many avenues for things that have been unfair. Yep. And it's not just like a suck it up, just be fine with it. It's a, 
how interesting that you can actually find peace in the middle of even stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think when I say that is that you can find God in the middle of those situations, even when stuff like that is happening. And what you said is actually like 100% true. Like peace is supposed to displace Mm. the anxiety and the worry that comes with trying to hold on to these things that we do stand to lose, you know that we have been kind of like continually aware of the fact that grief is everywhere. Not a come what may attitude and let it go and (laughs) let things pass down the river and just like, you know, don't worry about it. No, actually facing it, Mm -hmm. looking at it square and square in the eyes and saying, you know what, this isn't fair or I am hurting or I don't know what's going on, but God be here. Mm Mm-hmm. And please provide your presence yeah. in the middle of this thing that I'm walking through. Mm. God, please help. This one's, jeez. Uh, Acquiring peace is not going to a specific spot and getting what you need and then just being tranquil. Mm-hmm. Peace is, is an intersection of a relationship. Yep. Like I need the relationship of God in the middle of the thing that I'm going through. Yeah. I need the Prince of Peace. Mm-hmm. So God, would you step into the middle of our moments and would you bring yourself, your, the identity of yourself as the Prince of Peace yeah. into our stuff? In Jesus' name. <laughs> Love you guys. Thanks for sticking around for this one. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. This video is a resource of Wire Thin Ministries. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have many other videos just like this one, such as conversation videos, prayer videos, music videos, and much more that we would like to share with you. If you would like to contribute to the work of Water Within Ministries, head over to our website, waterwithinministries.com backslash donate and become a monthly donor today. Thank you so much. God bless you, and we will see you next time.